And we had, oh, I didn't get a count on male versus female. Son of a bitch. Top of the morning, friends and familials. Hope you're all doing wonderful on this beautiful, foggy California morning. Today we're gonna to take a look at the last clutch of 2022 that hashed out with mom on the eggs. And uh, we're gonna take a look at plugging those new babies into the Morph Market Offspring, Morph Market Offspring groups and see just how fun that is and easy that is. But first thing, ooh, this hill's getting steep. Let's go take a look at those snakes. Okie dokie. So this clutch was produced by Scuba Steve, our GHI Enchi Spot Nose Red Stripe Clown Male paired with Dot, our Bamboo Female. I'm starting to think that maybe Scuba Steve does not have GHI because this is going to be his third clutch and I've not seen a single GHI baby yet. Um, we did not get any normals in this clutch and this is the last clutch of 2022 because two of the snakes hatched out before the new year and actually the whole clutch was laid before the new year so I'd still count them as 2022's season. So this will be the last clutch of 2022. And um, with all those genes involved in play, I, I wouldn't imagine getting many normals, but of course we didn't. This first snake here is what I believe to say, and I'm gonna say what I believe to say for all of these because it's just what I believe. And I think I'm right, but I'd be totally open to comments down below letting me know that I'm actually wrong. But this is a red stripe, I believe. And I'm saying red stripe because of the uh, the blushing that kind of fades to the back of the head there. It kind of gets tan towards the back. That's one sign. Kind of stripes on the back as well that are popping up right, right around that neck. Now, of course, you can have that on a normal, but just kind of the the, ta the tone of the stripe and, and the way it looks. But the, the biggest thing for me is the pretty obvious graveling going on inside of the alien heads. It's, uh, it's kind of a telltale sign for red stripe as well as the kind of uniformity or the, the squishedness of the alien heads on the sides there, how they're kind of blocky and, and squishy, but squishy, such a good adjective. This is a female and that is snake number one. Now, of course, all of these are gonna be 100% het clown because father was a clown. Now, snake number two here to the untrained eye might appear to be a normal, but to somebody who's been looking at ball python morphs for quite a bit, then you would easily pick this out as an enchi. And a couple things I look at there are the uh, the way the eye stripes get thicker towards the back of the head. That's an enchi trait. And then also the banding of the pattern across the top. And you don't really have any alien heads. There's no eyes or keyholes. It's just uh, a lot of banding going across from side to side on the snake across the top of the back. It's something we look for with enchi. And it really cleans up the pattern. You get kind of lighter tan brown coloration going on in there. And... Uh, Snake number two here is a boy. Now on the B-roll here, I'm gonna be showing some comparative shots between some of the different snakes so you can kind of see the differences between what say an Enchi spot nose looks like versus an Enchi red stripe versus just a red stripe versus uh, just an Enchi, so, so you got that. But snake number three here is what I believe to be a red stripe spot nose. And spot nose because of the obvious uh, higher contrast than a normal ball python the much lighter uh, dorsal stripe going down the back that is uh, quite a bit brighter than the sides of the snake that's kind of a that's kind of a spot nose trait right there but really just that extra uh, contrast as well as that really pronounced head stamp and the thing that tells me red stripe is that head stamp again you kind of got the ears towards the back of the head on the head boobs you got what people have referred to as uh, you know kind of wearing uh, headphones or Mickey Mouse ears, but that's kind of a red stripe telltale sign as well as having that nice uh, graveling inside of the alien heads. Whereas with if it was just spot nose, the alien heads would not be quite so gravelly like that. And we'd be kind of more uh, uniform and more alien head looking without all the extra curricular activity going on inside. So that there is what I believe to be a spot nose red stripe. And snake number three, and lucky me, that's a female. And snake number four, I believe to be an enchi red stripe. 
Now it's obviously more going on than just Enchi because of the extra brightness and the uh, the head stamp is really what's making me think Red Stripe. It's kind of, you see those headphones trying to come into play there. I'll make sure before that I actually list these as available that I know what I'm talking about. This is a boy. I'll triple check with others in the industry just to get their opinions and then, and then weigh that as well and, and just get multiple opinions before I'm certain about what I'm gonna list this as, but yeah, uh, Enchi Red Stripe. Snake number four is a male. Snakes number five and six are very really squirrely and they're obviously both bamboo. Snake number five has a bit more graveling on the sides. Now what other genes are at play here, I'm not 100% certain. I like to see at least five meals and a few sheds, maybe even 10 meals and, and several sheds before I start trying to uh, play what genes are in with bamboo because bamboo is such a strong gene that it, it's hard to tell what's going on with the snake, but I don't believe that either of these are just bamboo. Snake number five here is really cool. He's been doing this uh, almost scrub python-like essing up of his head and, and doing these really cool kind of poses for me. Now he's not doing it right now that the camera came into focus, but just really interesting. Both of these snakes also hashed out with mom and weren't the ones that were in the incubator, whereas the last snake we show, snake number eight, um, was one of the two that came out of the incubator. Yeah, snakes seven and eight are actually the two that went in the incubator and didn't stay with mom because she rolled them to the side. Anyway, bo both definitely bamboo and what else they have is to be determined. And snake number seven here is gonna be an Enchi spot nose. Really cool belly pattern going on in this snake. Really awesome. Um, and just that extra contrast is why I say spot nose as well as the head stamp, kind of what I've seen on a lot of Enchi spot nose is a head stamp like that. And then the banding, of course, from the Enchi across the back. And I made this snake number seven simply because she was one of the snakes that was in the incubator. I made those two snakes, seven and eight. And again, the, the telltale sign for me with this snake is, is the way the head stamp is to say spot nose. If you compare it with the Enchi red stripe, you can really tell the difference in the head stamp. Uh, which one is the spot nose, which one's the red stripe. And again, snake number seven here is a female. Last but definitely not least here is our other bamboo, the third snake with bamboo in the clutch. This is snake number eight. She is a female and she's definitely a bamboo, much lighter than her uh, counterparts there. Her, her two brothers uh, are much darker than her. So not sure what's going on with her either other than the obvious bamboo. I'd love to say that there's some red stripe. I'd love to say that there's all kinds of things in this girl, but I'm just not gonna call anything until she's had at least a couple more sheds. And then after I get to show these to some other folks in the industry and, and get their opinions, but uh, beautiful snake nonetheless, and will most likely just stay here. So I'll just have to prove out what she is by breeding or after talking to other people. But either way, I believe this is gonna be a keeper because we produce plenty of uh, bamboo het clown animals, but they've always sold um, because, you know, the way I run my holdbacks is they don't, I don't really truly have any holdbacks because I, I like to keep as much space as possible. We've always been on a slow, slow growth program here at Triple B, so lots of holdbacks weren't always the uh, focus of our breeding program. It was more just like keeping the very creme de la creme and even some of those get sold. So very nice. All right, let's go get these things plugged up to Morph Market upstairs. Apologize, my office is a little bit of a mess. I also lost my mutation creation sweater when I was playing pickleball in a little break between here and here. Um, I need to record my screen. Do, 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 do. Sorry, my office is a bit of a mess. Sorry, the lighting's weird. It's just, it is what it is. So what you do, you come to your Morph Market page because you have a Morph Market account, right? You have to have a Morph Market account. If you don't have a Morph Market account, I don't know what you're doing. Even if you're not a breeder, you should have a Morph Market account. Click on this little egg over here to underneath Snakey on the side. And those are my offspring groups. And inside of my offspring groups, there will be a group that I already created, which is hiding somewhere, apparently. 2212, where are you? Last year? Oh, last year. It's under last year. It's because it's clutch from last year. So I already made all this before. If you watched that video, if you missed that video, then there's a link right here where you can check that out where I talked about the offspring groups before. So I'd already created this group and I went in here and I was able to have my adult male animal right there just pot up because I've got all my animals plugged into Morph Market now so this is easy to do. I just go boom, I had Scuba Steve as the sire, Dot as the dam right there. And then we come on down here and I had that there were nine good eggs. There ended up being actually uh, eight good eggs because one of them ended up going so it ended up being two bad eggs 
So that was unfortunate. But we had uh, this lay date, and then it, they actually didn't end up laying hatching. Well, so this is the interesting thing here. So I've got two different hatch dates, because the ones that she rolled out and I put in the incubator, they hatched at 55 days. And then the ones that were stayed with mom hatched three weeks later. So I'm not sure what to put on the date of birth. I guess we'll just put December 18th, even though a lot of them were different hatch dates for animals like that, which we clearly had. And we had, oh, I didn't get a count on male versus female. Son of a biscuit. I should be more prepared for this. Let's just say, well, I know for a fact that I have at least three female. I'll have to watch the video back and make sure I got it right. And maybe the rest were male. Not the best odds, but maybe I'm getting that wrong. Maybe I have more, but we'll just do that for now. Just for the sake of showing you guys. And I can always go back in here and edit this stuff. You got your sire, you got your dam, you got all this information already. These are all not for sale right now, which they're not until I get them ready. Although there is that new feature on Morph Market where you can make animals available that just hatched and have them um, not be, you know, be for sale, but with the understanding that the person's not going to get them until they're ready and established. So that's pretty cool too. And I've got each individual animal here. So I would just plug in and see, for example, I got, just click on the image and I can go right in here to my photos that I just took of these animals. And there's uh, girl number eight. Ooh, look, I can select all three photos. That's cool. Boom. All three photos go to this first animal here which I wasn't sure what she is. I was sure she's 100% het clown. And then also um, she's definitely bamboo. And then there's gonna be some other stuff to figure out down the line. So I can save that. I've got one female, that's actually number eight. Snake number eight, female number, who knows what. I can change the animal IDs to be my own form of ID that I usually do, which is I would do 22-12-008-F is what that female would be labeled as per my standard ID codes. And then just go through the rest of them like so, just plugging in what's what. And I mean, let's go ahead and go to the next one here. Let's see, the next female was, yep, that was, she's also female, uh, snake number seven here, who's the Enchi Red Stripe, sorry, Enchi Spot Nose. And do 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 right there. Uh, female, and she is 7, 007F, save, and she is, and she, and spot nose. Boom. Got that. Save it. And there it is. And then you just go down the rest of them, plug them in, and then start feeding them and, and checking all the stats on them and once they're established and ready to list or i guess technically i could list them right now for the new feature on morph market but uh we got pictures everywhere it's just great all kinds of information all down the line and then once i have multiple generations plugged into here like just the record keeping is going to be so easy i can go back and look at any of these see pictures of mom on eggs and just all kinds of cool stuff i'll put in pictures of the whole clutch sitting here together it's fantastic. This new offspring feature on Morph Market is absolutely wonderful. I hope you're using it. If you're not, well, you probably should give it a try. But yeah, I think that's gonna do it for us today. Thank you guys for tuning in as always. We appreciate you guys. Um, check out this links for our sponsors down in the description. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you on the next video. Aloha. <laughs>